Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. And today we're going to be planting a tomato and learning all about plant care, preparing your soil, um, Ivy Organics um, at time of transplant, as well as a tree guard paint for um, some of your other trees in the garden, for the bark, um, tree trunk, as well as the branches. Um, today being a hot day, got some sunblock. We always protect our skin when we're out in the sun. And this may be the first time you've actually heard that it's a great idea to actually do the same for your plants as well. Um, a lot of trees actually suffer from sunburn. And if you take a look at the trees in the park, if you see um, the trees you know, out of an arboretum, um, even trees I've seen in the nursery for sale have suffered from sunburn. Um, and you'll typically see that along, along the tree bark. Um, today, I'm actually going to be planting a tomato, as, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And you'll see that I've got one plant over here, which I've actually um, sprayed about an hour ago while setting up this table. Um, today is a, you know, in the mid-80s, um, approaching 90 degrees already um, in this spring, Southern California day. And you'll notice that the leaves are actually more intact and holding up a lot better than this guy over here, um, which I did not spray, just for demonstration purposes, to show you how much more it's wilted um, in comparison to this plant. Um, and it actually makes a huge difference when getting the plants into the ground and giving them their first fresh start. Um, the ad additional benefit of Ivy Organics being an organic paint is that it's got neem and castor oil in there. And neem oil has been used by farmers for hundreds and actually thousands of years in India um, to protect plants from insects that would actually um, use, you know, chew on the leaves and, um, and, and basically consume the plant if they're small enough. Um, and basically, you know, ruin the results of, um, you know, the results of your garden. So what we're, what we're going to do, and what I've already done with this plant, I'm going to show you towards the end of the video um, how we're going to actually prepare the product, is I've actually sprayed already with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint to protect it from sunburn, which it's doing. It's also got the neem oil to protect it from insects um, eating it. And it's also got um, castor oil, which basically also adds another element of making it taste bad, predominantly um, against rodents, um, are the ones that will usually avoid um, eating it. And that usually protects um, tree trunks and branches um, more so than the vegetables, but it's got that added benefit as well. Um, another point I want to make in regards to the Ivory Organics product is, um, to my left here, I've got a few paint products I found in my garage, paint primers, spray cans, um, you know, different products that have actually been used in horticultural use as well by diluting on 50% typically with water. You've heard about the latex paint being another option. But if you take a look at the back of the can, they all have um, warnings, especially here in California with being um, containing ingredients that cause cancer for one. Um, but even in addition to that, and also as important, especially being that we're applying it to plant, is the paints that you're picking up from the paint store have algicides and fungicides which are there to preserve the materials that you're protecting such as your wooden benches, um, your home, the eaves, um, and basically you know you're, you're wanting to, to put those preservatives to basically protect your structures that you're actually coating with paint. But when it comes to applying it to your plant, if it's got algicides in there, algicides a plant. So if it's got chemicals in there that are actually killing algae, you're actually harming your plants too. Um, and that's another reason to just not be applying any type of paint from your paint store onto your plants. And again, that's another reason to use something organic, which is predominantly plant-based um, and organic, and also um, certified by the Organic Trade Association uh, as being an organic product. So our first step that we're going to do here is we're going to talk about um, the use of organic products in preparing your soil. And here I've got a blend of different products that I want to share with you. Um, here, for example, is an organic product called um, Job's Organic Vegetable and Tomato Food. And when I take a look at the back of it, um, aside from the numbers that I'm looking at here, which say 274, the two is for um, nitrogen, which basically stimulates the growth and um, you know make sure that your plants grow vigorous and green. Um, the next number on here is a seven. The seven is um, a strong emphasis on fruit production and flowers. And the last number, the four, is for disease resistance and, and a strong, stable root system. Um, so it's a combination of those numbers. But what's most important, and the reason it says here it's a, it's a tomato supplement, is tomatoes are known for having N 
blossom rot, which is basically the bottom of your tomato will turn black and actually, you know, probably make it inedible. Um, unless maybe you can salvage it by cutting them in half, but chances are it's going to end up being trash if you got black tomatoes growing on your plants. And it's typically caused by a deficiency in calcium. And this one here has 7% of this content is dedicated to just calcium. And it's calcium that actually prevents tomatoes from having the end blossom rot where the bottom actually turns black. Um, there's other products, not just products that actually specialize in tomatoes. Um, here's another product made by um, Espoma. And here's the numbers on this one is 344. And the 344 again means 3% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, 4% potassium, you know. And um, the great part about this again is it's derived from feather meal, poultry manure, bone meal, alfalfa meal, all these organic sources. And again, when it comes to the calcium, it's got calcium percentage at 5%, which again is a great amount of calcium. Um, and here they got their picture of their tomato. Um, another great product to consider. Uh, another product here from Eco Scraps, another organic product derived from organic sources. Um, Jobs here, organics, it says fruit and citrus. Um, pretty much, I'm trying to take a look through the numbers here in the back. This one here is another 355. So again, a pretty relatively balanced fertilizer to use in your garden. Um, what I wanna hopefully steer you away from and the reason um, we're gardening organic, aside from you know wanting to become, you know, trying to create that whole foods organic garden in your backyard, um, and as I also sometimes refer to you as growing as they did back in the Garden of Eden, um, you would use organic sources. But in this world, we're more familiar with these alternative products, which uh, this one here, Osmocote, for example, has. And one of the pluses about it is it's got a lot of um, supplemental micronutrients which are contained in these organic products as well um, but what's lacking is that it's not organic which means you're um, enriching the soil with nutrients but you're not feeding the soil organism which include the worms um, the roly-polies the slugs the nematodes the bacteria which are beneficial um, in many instances and this product does not enrich the soil, which ultimately leads to a happy and healthy plant. These are just chemical alternatives for getting those nutrients to create green plants and vigor and fruit production, but it's coming from a chemical source. This here is one product that I would not recommend. And here's another one that we see all too often in our garden center, which again is an inorganic source um, for feeding your plants. Um, the other thing I wanna share with you in, in using organic versus inorganic is the sources for where those nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, those are your three macronutrients. But plants need far more than just three ingredients to thrive. There's um, magnesium, iron, um, sulfur. There's a lot of other micronutrients that are just as important for the health of the plant. And those are actually derived from, again, organic sources. You might notice behind me that I've got piles of um, cuttings from other plants throughout the garden that I've spaced in between my fruit trees that are behind me. Um, those are all there basically returning all of the um, all of the vitamins that I've enriched in the soil and anything that I've cut off is in that plant material and going right back into the soil and all of the soil organisms are there to basically eat it, consume it, and feed it right back into the soil which ultimately feeds your plants and creates for another um, healthy year in your garden. So my first step here is I want to show you um, a couple other products actually before um, we go to the next step. But here's another product I want to share with you. This is a lawn fertilizer, obviously not something you need to use in your tomato garden. Um, but what I wanted to share with you here is the numbers, 2905. Um, you put a product like this in your garden and it says it's 29% of this is nitrogen, none of it is phosphorus, and 5% of it is, um, is potassium. So with 29% nitrogen, you're gonna get huge luscious growth growth, beautiful green plants, um, you know, might give you great results um, initially, but with zero with phosphorus, that means you're going to be creating a plant with very little to no flowers, very little to no fruits, um, and with the five, very weak root system, um, you know, for disease resistance, very low as well. Um, so when picking a fertilizer for your garden, I always recommend just picking something that's neutral, unless you've got so much growth going on on your tomatoes, probably because you've had a chemical fertilizer like this with too much nitrogen to begin with. 
um, you may need to balance it with something that might just be high in the phosphorus to kind of balance what's going on in your soil. Um, so that's it. And here's another product, another inorganic way of fertilizing, which again, I don't recommend using inorganic fertilizers. Um, and again, the numbers on here, 10% nitrogen, 6% um, phosphorus, 4% potassium. Um, so again, the goal on this one, as you can see based on these numbers, is higher, more focus on growth, medium amount of focus on fruits and flowers, and less emphasis on the root structure disease resistance. So the first thing I'd like to do now is I want to show you how um, I prepared my garden soil. And we're going to be doing a few of these um, throughout the season. Um, to basically show all the steps and the care and the maintenance that goes along the way uh, before we actually head down so that when we go down we stay down um, with the future videos I'm going to teach you about the maintenance and the care of your tomatoes one of them is actually using a salt you can actually use a special salt to actually help turn your tomatoes green um, and actually enrich the flavor but do not use table salt we're going to talk about those salts in, in another video um, and then there's organic ways of actually treating your plants from pests. But again, my number one rule of thumb is if there's some aphids or um, minor insect damage to your plants, leave it alone. If there's stuff you can actually manually remove, remove it. But if it gets unmanageable and the plant actually really needs your help, there's products we're going to talk in the other video. Um, and I'll go into more detail about something like spinosad. Um, using a mineral oil or a neem oil as well. Um, and we'll talk about other things that can be done to help um, protect and preserve your plants. Before we head down there, I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna show you how this Ivory Organics product comes to you if it were delivered. Um, basically comes with this white powdery um, bag of organic white paint. And it also comes with this vial. This one here is bubble wrap. And this vial actually contains two oils. It's the neem oil and the castor oil that's in there. And the first thing I'm going to do is put the white powdery paint inside the can. And I always recommend that you only use as much as you need. Because it's organic, um, it says in the instructions that it only lasts for a couple of weeks. Um, unless you actually freeze it, then you can store it for a couple of years that way. Um, but I recommend that um, you only add as much of the powdery paint as you intend to use. So I put the paint in there first. I'm gonna fill it up with water halfway and begin stirring. And then I'm gonna add the neem oil with the castor oil in that vial. Set that down. And I'm gonna stir that up. So now we got a pretty uniform consistency. And I just filled it up as high as I can um, near the top with water. And you can see that some of the oils are working their way up, but you're going to have to stir this about every five to ten minutes as you're applying it, um, whether or not you're painting the tree, tree trunk, tree um, branches. Um, and we're going to use this today as a sunblock on the tomato plants. And you can see um, how that's going to make a difference. These plants really need some help. Um, they've actually last been watered a little, I think, about two days ago. So. Um, being that it's a hot day, we're going to get in the ground. I'm going to show you how we're going to care for them. Um, one other product before we get down there. Here's another one called Mater Magic. Um, calcium, which is you know a big one, necessary for healthy tomatoes, 4%. So we've seen some other products actually having a little bit more um, higher numbers on calcium. We're going to be taking care of our tomatoes about every four months, feeding them every four months. Um, so despite what the directions say, I'm always going to feed them a little bit less. But every month I'm going to feed them just to keep the soil organisms happy, to make sure there's plenty of nutrients and minerals for both the plants as well as the soil organisms to keep us going through the season. Um, so we've prepared our Ivy Organics paint here. I'm going to take this down with me and I'm going to take this sad looking tomato um, and you're going to see how awesome this tomato is going to grow over the season um, with the next videos that are, that are going to be coming up. So come on down. So before we begin, and some people make fun of me for doing this, but you got to put on your gloves. If you take a look at the, um, if you look at the ingredients in these organic products, they have um, a lot of 
bacteria that's sometimes added to the product to help stimulate um, the you know living soil. Um, there's fun, there's fungus spores that are in there to help um, also grow the mycorrhizae um, root structures that help benefit the plants as well. Um, so put on your gloves and if you actually eat anything out of your garden because of the bacteria and everything else, I do have the biology background and, um, and ever since and even before, I've always washed everything that I get out of the garden and I just want to give you that tip that don't be eating things right out of the garden without first rinsing them off with fresh clean water. This here is actually a stem off of um, that grapevine that was growing in the wrong direction. So I actually pruned it just before the video. I'm just showing you how I'm throwing that in that pile. Uh, and that's just one of the things I'm doing in my garden, which I'll do another video on um, in the future. Um, so the next step we're gonna do here is I wanna show you how I prepared the soil. Um, let me get my hands on one of these fertilizers here. So you can see what I've got here is I basically created a vertical garden. Um, originally the post was actually constructed out of bamboo only. And in the first year it worked, but it wasn't, um, it just didn't make it through the last month or two when it was actually supporting, it seemed like 100 pounds of tomatoes per couple of feet. Um, and just to let you know, this row is only 18 feet. Um, these bamboo stakes will actually go all the way up and around, um, all the way up towards the rain gutters, which I've got these um, tied into. And um, so I've got these metal beams that are then supported by these bamboo um, stakes that could run across. I've already um, zip tied all of these corners with the exception of one, which I'd like to show you how I do. So you can see here the bamboo stake goes across. I take my zip tie and run it through the hole. And run that a little bit lower to catch the first branch. And we're done. The extra length I can cut off. We can see we've got that length going all the way across. And I spaced them about 8 to 12 inches apart all the way up. And as they get higher, you can actually space them a little bit more um, in my experience. But while they're lower, they actually really benefit from that support. Next up, you can see that soil already looks good. I did prepare this about a week ago. Um, but what I did do, and this here is just one product, but I'll usually use an amend or a compost mix. Again, this is organic based. I actually make my own compost in the corner of the property as well. But I just wanna show you, you know, for those that are looking to do this easier, I basically put about a handful of soil every few inches all the way across. And then I took some organic fertilizer such as this and ran it across the entire 18 foot length. So we'll just do that all the way there. And then the next step I did was I basically tilled only, you know, those 8 to 12 inches. I didn't go incredibly deep. I know there's some neighbors that I've heard about where they'd replace their entire soil. I've even seen it on YouTube where they'd buy bags of soil and just put that in. But there's a lot of living organisms in your soil that are native to your area. You want to keep them here. And we're just going to mix. Um, the organic compost, which has now been enriched with the organic fertilizer. And we're just gonna turn that over. So that was pretty much it. And you can already see, here's the worms. There's probably hundreds within these first few feet. Um, it's such a hot day today, they've got, they're, they're deeper, but as soon as I start watering, they're gonna start coming back up. But these worms are actually feeding on the organic matter that we're putting in. Between the organic fertilizers and the organic compost, um, these worms are thriving. But if you put chemical fertilizers, you're starving these soil microorganisms and the large organisms. This isn't considered micro. This is actually something you can see. Um, so our next step is we're gonna get this tomato on the ground. And man, this guy's suffering. Such a hot day today. So we're gonna, open a hole here for it. And tomatoes, more so than almost any other vegetable, love being plant, planted deep. Here's, um, so here we are, we're going as deep as we can. And I'm then gonna take these scissors. So this here is um, also an organic pot, which 
Um, if you read the instructions on these, um, it'll basically say you can actually plant the whole pot and all with the, with the tomato. I never recommend doing so because the roots can actually get tangled within while it's sitting at the nursery. I want them to actually have a fresh, clean start um, here in my garden. So I take off that plastic label. Um, I'm going to leave this here as um, a reminder of what we have and hopefully you're going to watch these videos as, as time passes. But this here is a San, um, um, San Marzano heirloom tomato and it says indeterminate. This indeterminate variety means it'll continue to grow throughout the entire growing season unlike the Roma tomato, which is, I've got one here behind me. The Roma tomato on the other hand is a determinate variety, which means its height is limited. They'll generally produce all of its fruit within a three week period of span or a three week um, period of time. And after the three weeks, that's it. There's no more tomatoes and your plant is spent. Um, so if, unless you love Roma tomatoes and really wanna have those in your garden, um, you can go ahead and plant them, but I love growing my indeterminate varieties because it provides food all throughout the year. Um, another general tip is I like planting my medium to smaller sized tomatoes um, just because I, I, they generally put a lot more tomatoes out than if you grow like the beefsteak and the larger um, tomato varieties, which generally hold um, a lot less. And again, if there's any damage to your um, tomato crop, it can mean you know, a significant um, decrease in the amount of crops you actually get off of those tomato plants. So I always stick to medium to small sized tomatoes and try to get as many quantity wise. Um, so I'm gonna leave that steak here for now. Um, another issue that I see here is this plant that I picked up from the nursery actually has two plants in there. Um, you, they'll usually put two to three seeds per pot. This one actually had two that um, germinated. First thing I'm gonna do is actually remove one of these plants. So I'm just pulling this guy out and trying to damage. Here, I got actually some of the root here. So I can go and plant this guy. Chances are it'll grow, um, but I'll, I'm gonna give you a tip. And if you do the same thing as I'm gonna do for this guy, this guy should actually have a chance. But I wanna space it at least two to three feet. Um, and we're gonna be doing that all the way across. So in these 18 feet, I'll probably have six to seven tomatoes um, growing vertically up, up this, what we call the tomato cave, um, which I hope you'll get to enjoy and see with us later on this summer. So next we're gonna open up this pot. That's gonna open up here. You can see all of those roots. It's, in, again, this was my point and I'm glad I opened it. It is so attached to the bottom of this pot, the roots have kind of um, held on really tight near the bottom. I'm glad I took it off because otherwise the roots would end up um, what they call is um, pot bound or root bound where the roots will actually coil. There's not much coiling, there's a lot of it stuck onto this this material. I'm gonna throw it back there and I'm not recycling that. I'm actually gonna end up throwing, um, I'm putting the recycle bin but I'm not putting the, that in my garden. Um, I like also removing the bottom part of the roots that may have also coiled. Next step we're gonna do is to remove all of the leaves. I'm just gonna try to keep a few leaves near the top. The rest of the plant is actually gonna go underground. Anything that goes underground leaves or small stems and branches will all come off. Um, the reason being is, imagine one of these leaves being um, like your hand and you wouldn't want to stick your hand underground and allow that to start rotting. Um, the, so the soil organisms can actually work its way into the rotting part of the plant and try to maybe compromise um, the actual center part of the stem. Um, I'm going to call it like the plant trunk, but it's not really a trunk, um, but the actual plant stem. So I'm removing now Step number one, two, three, here we go, one more, and one more, and one more. So here we go. So we're left with just a few leaves here on the top. It looks bad, but trust me, you're going to watch this plant grow into something quite amazing. And now we're going to stick it in the ground about as low as we can go. Some farmers actually like tipping it back um, and doing something more like that. I'm actually gonna grow it straight up. And we're just gonna backfill it in. So we fertilized the, the soil, we mixed it in. I'm gonna take another handful of this product. I'm gonna encourage all the worms and all the soil organisms to come up and enjoy the food around here. And that's gonna help the tomato actually get a really good start. So we're gonna do that. Get that little stem out of the way. And now I'm just gonna 
Give it actually one more boost with an organic fertilizer. So this here is fish fertilizer. And you can see here it says 511. Um, and again, don't be misled by the numbers. You've got to kind of be your own scientist also in the garden. And you get a fresh start every spring. So um, what I've learned in my experience is I like to start off with a high nitrogen number, but not like that lawn fertilizer that we saw at 29. This is a mild, uh, mildly strong nitrogen amount. There's some phosphorus, some potassium. Remember, look at all the things that we put in the soil. They're actually well-rounded, um, uh, providing it all the both micro and uh, minor nutrients. But this here is going to give it another boost of nitrogen to hopefully get it to grow, um, grow well over the next few weeks and get established. So we got our fish fertilizer in there, and we're just going to add that around the plant. buckets from one of my daughters and the next step I'm just gonna rinse the plant off with some water soak it down a little bit more and last but not least we want this guy to recover from all of that sunburn so here I've got my spray bottle it's just clean white um, pure water and I'm just gonna mix this Ivory Organics product which has the neem and the castor oil to keep the bugs off of it, to you know keep the sun from burning it any further. And I'm just putting, um, here's a tablespoon, uh, but the instructions actually recommend putting one or two teaspoons per gallon. Um, I've put a little bit more, but I'm only gonna spray it this once. You can, and you're allowed to do it up to um, one to two times per year, according to the manufacturer. And here we go. You don't see the whiteness on it, but you can see it's, white it's actually reflecting the light it's going to give this plant a much better shot at making it this first week while the roots get established um, and it gets its balance and, and makes this home let me show you another plant and here we'll put the label over here and now i'm going to show you actually another plant this way if you want to follow me that i planted about six weeks ago So this plant here is an early grow variety. The early grow variety has been by far my favorite tomato variety to be grown in the garden and most nurseries actually sell it. Um, as you can see over here, it's already got a cluster of two, four, five tomatoes right here um, at, at level one. This is just probably eight inches off the ground, another foot higher. There's another row of flowers that were here just a few days ago that are now tomatoes, one, two, three tomato number four coming out still a yellow flower over here um so every what is this about a foot there's going to be about another five to eight tomatoes sometimes and here's the next um cluster of blossoms over here with another five to probably ten blossoms um so every foot is going to have these cluster of tomatoes going all the way up uh, my vertical garden and eventually become part of our ceiling and what's going to ultimately become our tomato cave so let's take a look now um being that this is a vertical garden um, and you got to, excuse me for one second, I want to show you one more thing, stay there. So just remember to have this tomato cage, cage for demonstration purposes. I haven't used a tomato cage in years, um, maybe five years or ten years now. Um, I brought it just to show you that I hate these things. If you stick them in the ground, you better hope your tomato only stays this tall. Um, and I know most of us want larger tomatoes. I've seen some people put stakes in it. They can probably get a couple branches a little bit taller. Um, but my favorite way to grow these tomatoes, and it, you know, this is a large cage, but by the time I push it in the ground, it's probably gonna be up to my hip at most, actually lower. Um, so I don't recommend using tomato cages, but I just wanted to bring it to show you the difference would be, it'd be growing what would ultimately become a tomato bush. We know this indeterminate variety on average will grow at least eight feet. If you let it go, it could be 16, 20 feet. I've actually grown them where they went up and around and, and down and you know, they're, they sometimes can become unmanageable. I only grow these one year at a time. I start new every single spring. Um, so I just wanted to show you the tomato cage. The tomato cage is ultimately gonna create a tomato bush. Um, my, and again, the issues with doing it this way is the air won't circulate well around the plant. You'll actually have more leaves that'll suffer from 
um, mildew, from rust, from a whole variety of issues that plague tomatoes. Um, and one of them while I'm talking about it is make sure that you water your tomatoes actually in the morning. It's preferred than watering in the evenings um, so that the water actually dries off the plant. It doesn't stick on the plant all night long um, you know, and, and harvesting diseases um, on the leaves that can ultimately, ultimately compromise and shorten the life of your tomato. So I'm gonna put this tomato cage behind me. Again, I'm showing for demonstration purposes and then I'm gonna return it. I don't use tomato cages in my garden. Um, so if I can show you one other thing in my garden before I show you how I'm, what I'm gonna do with this tomato plant. If you take a look at my sprinklers here, I basically have them set up as pop-up spray and they pretty much spray in this area. There's one sprinkler here, there's another one about three feet that way, and then another three feet over here, another one three or four feet behind me. Um, but what I've learned in my experience, and I know that um, you know, with the drought that's affecting so many states, and especially us here in Southern California, when it comes to growing good vegetables, I've noticed that it's really important to actually maintain a healthy soil. And the only way to have healthy, healthy soil is by keeping it moist. So if you're actually doing a drip irrigation that's only watering, let's say for example if I can bring it back over here but if I had a drip irrigation that's set right here next to the tomato plant a lot of drip irrigations and depending on your soil will actually go just and water that area that's below my hand but what about the other side of the plant over here it needs water too so what I've learned is to actually just spray the entire soil which feed you know which basically waters and actually activates your soil and all the soil organisms that are in there, the worms, the nematodes, the bacteria, the fungus, the everything that's in there that actually is creating a nice biological balance to create healthy tomatoes that are going to make your family healthy. Um, that's all going to happen by actually um, enriching and taking care of everything around it. And the only way to accomplish that, in my opinion, is with a sprinkler spray. Um, so I basically spray this entire zone around my tomatoes to keep all the soil wet. Now we're actually going to train this um, tomato um, plant. You can see that there's a stem over here, and there's a stem over here, and there's another stem over here, and then there's this main stem over here. There's a lot of stems, and this is in the process of turning into a bush. And I just told you, we're not gonna grow a tomato bush. We're actually growing tomato vines um, that are gonna grow vertically. So with my tomatoes that grow vertically, I only select two of my favorite um, vines, sometimes one depending on space. If I don't have enough space, I'll actually grow them single stem tomatoes. Um, but with this one, I'm actually going to do a, a double, um, a double vine tomato, which will grow up and around and, and, and basically create the roof for what's going to ultimately become my tomato cave. So let me show you how we're actually going to start removing branches off this tomato. Here's one that I'm taking off. If it were smaller, I'd be able to remove it with my fingers. Here's another one coming off of the root. So I'm going to try to go a little bit lower and I can see it coming off the stem and I got this branch out of the way. We're gonna get this branch out of the way. 